I'm with Charles Chevers, who is the CTO for Customer Premise Equipment at Aris. Hello, Charles. Hey, John. Um, well, we know the gigabit era has come in, uh, whether it's over DOCSIS 3.1 or EPON or some other technology, we're going to end up with these wonderful access networks. And is that just going to create a horrible bottleneck in the home because of the Wi-Fi constraints? I think, I think it is, John, in terms of um, you know, customers are going to pay for gigabit or even two gigabit access network speeds. They're going to want to see that performance on their Wi-Fi network. And 90% of devices connect on Wi-Fi now. So getting one gigabit speeds on Wi-Fi is, is important, right, because we want to keep those uh, customers happy with their access speeds. So the important thing there then is to support single devices through full range at the home at high speeds and developing architectures around solving that is what ours are currently engaged in. Okay, so just run us through very quickly what that involves. I mean, as I understand it, we're probably on the point where we move from single access points to multi-access points. There's some software issues with that as well. Exactly. So, you know, a single radio is what we've always aspired to do to try and get as much range at the lowest possible, po possible uh, cost for our customers. And um, that's been fine up to now for sort of regular, you know, ABR level video at lower bit rates. But when you want to do 4K video at range in the home and you need TVs all throughout the home, uh, you need to do uh, multiple access points. And those multiple access points then give you not only range extension, but they also give you the ability to platform in, again, gigabit level speeds. Now, generally, you probably won't need gigabit to a single device, but generally, um, or specifically, you're going to need uh, gigabit to a few devices in the home that are key devices, maybe VR uh, goggles in the future, for example. But in the interim, then, we need reliable speeds at 25 to 50 megabits a second for, say, 4K video transmission over Wi-Fi. But when we say 25 to 50 megabits a second for Wi-Fi, you really need to provision about four times more than that. So then four times 25 is 100 megabits, or four times 50 is 200 megabits. So that's where the gigabit Wi-Fi requirement comes out. It just needs to be able to have enough headroom for those 4K video transmissions to make sure that the customer never sees turn on the TV and it works as good as uh, Quam Video worked in the past then. Okay, and when we move into this sort of, it feels like a new chapter in communications really, because with previous upgrades to broadband, it's fairly incremental, although it's exciting going up to 200, but this is coming at the same time as the smart home, we've got the wider IoT to follow yeah. it, and we could see a lot of companies trying to get into the, the customer premise yeah. and bring their own equipment, maybe their own sort of routers or other devices. I mean, what does that mean for service providers? Is that as much a threat as an opportunity? It's, it's uh it, it is a threat, certainly, but I think both the service providers see the same opportunity as the CE devices guys do. It's important to connect to every device in the home and be able to offer a service to that device. If you, if you allow a service provider, if you allow a retail router to come in and knock you out of the service value chain, you can't take that revenue. If you can't see the device, you can't offer a service over it. So what we're seeing is operators are upping their game, we think, in that they're trying to be much faster to new areas like uh, 5 gigahertz, um, which is the, the place to be now for Wi-Fi. AX is coming soon, and again, we're seeing operators want to be sort of first to market on AX potentially, um, all because of the, the real need for really good Wi-Fi and better Wi-Fi performance. On the IoT side then, as we know, there'll be many, many devices in the home and gradually uh, increase. So pe some people like cameras, some people like thermostats, some people like a combination of lights, thermostats, and cameras. It is going to grow one nice device at a time. Um, they don't necessarily have huge bandwidth, those devices, so it's important for range that you connect them on both Wi-Fi and other um, low-power uh, radios. But some of them, like cameras, will grow in terms of bandwidth requirements. We're seeing you know, cameras moving to 4K capability for monitoring in the home will chew up a bit of upstream speed, which is why technologies like full duplex DOCSIS are important for upstream capacity and why you know, D DSL lines will move to fiber faster to be able to offer you know, uh, monitoring and 4K cameras or, or other services that are uh, bandwidth hungry. And in simple terms, can the service provider be the aggregator for all those devices? Can they provide the connectivity and you know, remain the prime touch point between the home and the customer? I, I think they're in the ideal position to, uh, to do it. I think the service provider is the, uh, particularly, I mean, broadband is the, the key uh, service, right? It's if to find broadband as the service. Um, so the, the service provider is in a unique opportunity to aggregate all those services. They can't be best in class in all of them. So typically what we, we think they will do is they'll pick a number of areas that they'll focus on particularly. So just say a service provider decides they want to get into camera uh, games, so they want to give cameras to these, the uh, consumers because they own the, the, the broadband connectivity so they can optimize the bandwidths. Uh, 
but they may not be the best for uh, sensors or for um, you know the, the coffee maker IoT device. So what we see what we see happening is that they're going to partner with those best in class um, IoT providers, and so the top ten of the top ten things that people really want to do from your um, smart lights to your, your water sprinkler to your garage door opener or whatever it is. And then they'll do a cloud-to-cloud -cloud integration with those. So what we think is that the operator should provide the aggregation of the hub experience in the home. So the IoT hub should be in a singular device rather than 12 devices from 12 different companies. Ergonomics are good. The consumer likes it that way. And then the operator should allow services to flow into that hub then, be it their own microservice of the, the camera I mentioned, or then the top 10 of the top 10 services. And they can do that by doing cloud-to-cloud -cloud integration with the, 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 the best-in-class of those services. I think the, uh, the consumer will, will like that single aggregated app. You click on one app, say, manage my home, look after my home, but you'll still get the best-in-class of whatever the best lock is or the best garage door opener. And that's a good thing, we think, for everybody, including the, the, the companies that provide those devices, for example. Okay, and in terms of um, getting consumers to pay extra for gigabit speeds, yeah. I mean, what will be the services that actually drive them to... I think uh, generally, I mean, you know, the, we know broadband is so sticky at the moment, and we know that you know uh, people want to have faster speeds at range, right? They're doing more stuff in the home, so it's it's uh, you know it's a function of the kind of services that uh, create a better user experience. So, for example, in the VR world, if I'm an avid VR gamer, those VR files now, which are not live streamed, those are sort of offline. You send a large file; those files are, tend to be. 10 or 20 times larger than traditional games that have we've seen even outstripped the latest movie in terms of downloads. So the experience, for example, on a 10 gigabyte, um, 100 gigabyte VR file at 100 megabits is it takes two hours to download it. So if I'm an avid gamer and I'm going to download a new VR uh, game in a year's time or even the current ones today, um, to t wait two hours for that is going to be not a good user experience. So by Having a gigabit service from the operator, I take two hours down to uh, 20 minutes. Then, right? So it's it's a it's a you know go and finish your uh, cup of tea and come back and the game is downloaded versus I'll play it tomorrow, right? So, mm -hmm. so those experiences we think are going to uh, improve. And of course, things like live VR is also another one where people will want to have the ultimate low latency experience. So gigabit bursts uh, will probably uh, you know predicate having to have. A VR experience of a certain level, right? If you want a 4K VR experience, which is not today, but it's coming in a couple of years' time, um, that experience will require gigabit speeds on the on the burst network on, okay. the, on the access side. And in one sentence, is it video generally? I mean, before VR comes along, is it concurrent multi-screen that's the real driver? I, I think from a downstream and from a near-term perspective, it is. But we often talk about machine-to-machine -machine kind of interaction, and you know, in one sense, machine-to-machine -machine can resolve itself as a video. The human being has to see the result as a video. Um, but we do see, um, you know, as more devices come in the home and people look at, say, health or other kind of really deep analytics-based um, uh, solutions, the amount of, band the amount of uh, bits that are required to be transported up and down can increase as well. But there's nothing like video. I mean, 4K, uh, for example, the experts will tell you that in VR, I guess, when we get to that point where we can truly be immersed, uh, you're probably talking anywhere between you know, 100 megabits per second to 500 megabits per second to allow the eye to f rest and feel comfortable that the image it's seeing is, is, is more natural than the current kind of, you know, uh, 720p VR experiences, which uh, the eye gets tired with, right? After 15 minutes, it's, it's a little bit difficult to keep watching the because your eye figures out it's not real. So we think, we think video is probably going to drive certainly a lot of the, most of the bandwidth Ex down, downstream. It'll probably drive the upstream bandwidth too with cameras and surveillance solutions going to 4K um, and then maybe some machine to machine stuff will also trickle up there. Okay, all right. Well, there's a lot to play out in this market, I think. So uh, look forward to watching it over the next few IBCs. So thanks very much for uh, Thank you, John. talking to us, Charles.